All right, guys, I believe this is where I left you off last time. If you didn't catch my last video, we are fixing everything that I think is wrong with the Telecaster design. And for those of you who missed it, here's a quick recap. Telecaster, boring. Only two pickups, boring. Slab body, so boring. Zebra wood, well, actually kind of cool, but also boring. All right. Now that you're up to speed, we just gotta do some fret work and some basic assembly and some wiring and soldering, and we should have a good playable guitar by the end of this video. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, let's get started. So today is an extremely windy day, which means I will probably not be able to do any sort of voiceover or commentary. So hopefully what I lack in commentary, maybe I can make up for in cool camera angles. Broke Gen 4 square fret file. Very awesome. Link in the description. Not sponsored! So there's some inherent challenges that come with turning a regular Telecaster into a Nashville Telecaster, and those challenges lie in the middle pickup. You see, you can't just throw any middle pickup in between two Telecaster pickups, okay? Unlike a Strat pickup set, which is purposely wound to be a three pickup set, you have three pickups with the middle one being reverse wound and reverse polarity, of the neck and the bridge. That way you get hum canceling between the neck and middle and hum canceling between the middle and the bridge. They're also wound so that they are in phase with the other pickups as well. So the problem is with Telecaster pickups, the neck and bridge are reverse wound, reverse polarity. So you get hum canceling between the neck and bridge pickups, which means, like I said, you can't just drop any pickup in the middle. Now you can try your best to find a middle pickup that matches the winding and polarity of your bridge pickup. Then you'll have hum canceling between neck and middle, but obviously you won't between middle and bridge. Or likewise opposite, you can do the same and find one that matches your neck, and then you get hum canceling between your middle and bridge, but not between your neck and middle. Now, even with doing that, you run the risk of your middle pickup being out of phase with one or both of your pickups. So really, you just have two options here. You can either buy a purpose-built Nashville Telecaster set with all three pickups purpose wound to be a three pickup instrument, or you could do what I did and then just drop a couple of humbuckers in it, and then you don't have to worry about that at all. Now, as mentioned before, another problem that I have whenever I make a three pickup instrument is that the middle pickup oftentimes can be out of phase with the other two. So the way I solved that problem with this one, I just installed a push-pull pot for reverse polarity on the middle pickup. That way I can make it in or out of phase. Now, I actually got lucky when I picked this 
in that the standard wiring for this pickup is actually in phase with the other three. So adding the in phase, out of phase push pull just gives me some extra tonal options. The other modification I did is that I added a bridge bypass switch into a push pull pot here. That way when I'm using the bridge pickup only, I can bypass the volume and tone and go straight to the output and that acts as a blower switch. But more importantly, when I'm in the neck only position, I can turn that on and still get the neck and bridge position that you would get from a traditional Telecaster. And that's the big difference between a regular Telecaster and a Nashville Telecaster is that a Nashville Telecaster has a standard strat wiring. So you don't get that neck and bridge option. In addition, you get another option that if you put it in your neck and middle position, then you can again, turn that bridge on and you get all three pickups together. Combine that with in and out of phase for all three, as well as neck and middle and middle and bridge, we get a total of 10 usable tone combinations. And as always, if you're interested in doing some of these wiring tricks to your guitar or kit that you're building, you can purchase a wiring diagram for this exact guitar from my website for just $4.99. Or if you become a supporting member on Patreon for any dollar amount, you get free access to all my wiring diagrams. So just a couple of final thoughts about this Zebra Wood Telecaster kit. My mind, I think, is still not made up about this Bakelite engineered Zebra Wood. I mean, I'm really torn because it looks beautiful. It takes stains and dyes really well. It does kind of feel like the guitar is made out of plastic. It's really heavy. I mean, even taking off some material for my carbs, it's probably similar in weight to a Les Paul, honestly. It, it's that heavy. Again, with the plasticky feeling, I mean, I fine sanded the back of this neck really well and then did the stains and dyes and, and top coats as usual. And it still kind of feels a little bit plasticky. So again, I'm just really torn on it. I think it looks beautiful. I think it's super cool. It was really easy to work with, you know, the routing and the carving and everything was not a problem. It takes the stains and dyes, um, but just overall kind of heavy and plasticky feeling. As for the pickups, I was happy with the tone of the kit neck pickup, so I kept it. But what really blew me away 
was this middle humbucker that I installed. I mean, this is just like a $13 or $14 pickup on Amazon, and I had really low expectations for it, but it sounds really good. And like I said, I dropped it in and it was perfectly in phase with the other pickups that I used. And I really love the tone of that middle pickup, especially when combined with the neck or the bridge pickup. I just think it sounds beautiful. Now, as impressed as I am with that pickup, I'm equally unimpressed, I think, with the bridge pickup that I got. And this one was actually a little more expensive. It was like $18 or $20. And I just think that it's kind of bland sounding. Um, it does do better with high gain stuff, which is kind of why I got it. But I think in and of itself, it does. It just doesn't sound very special. So that's something that I might upgrade a little bit later down the road. Now, recording the demos of this guitar, I was using my new favorite budget-friendly pedals from Music Lily. Not sponsored! The compressor and the analog delay. So if you guys haven't seen it, check out that video over there. And of course, let me know down in the comments what you think of the tone of this guitar. I'm Dan, this is Guns Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.